Did you know that in the south of Europe, the Alps form a colossal towering barrier? They're so immense that building over them is impractical and going around them is too wide of a journey. But guess what? The EU has embarked on an ambitious project, constructing an unprecedented network of tunnels beneath the Alps. Ever wondered what these tunnels will look like or how they'll be built? Join me as we delve into the fascinating construction details of the six longest tunnels in the Alps. The Alps, before we talk about the six longest tunnels, let's learn about the Alps. If you've ever been to the south of Europe, you've probably seen these huge mountains. The Alps have lots of peaks, with many reaching over 3,000 meters tall. They stretch for more than 1,000 kilometers and go through eight different countries, Monaco, France, Switzerland, Italy, Liechtenstein, Germany, Austria, and Slovenia. Crossing the Alps has never been easy. Even in ancient times, it was really hard. There's a famous story from ancient Rome about a general named Hannibal who led an army with war elephants across the Alps. But most of the elephants couldn't handle the cold and died. Nowadays, there are tunnels, roads, and railways that help people cross the Alps. But many of these routes are old-fashioned. For example, the Semmeringbahn Railway, built in the 1850s, is one of the oldest mountain railways in Europe. It has tunnels and bridges, but it's slow and can't carry heavy loads. These old routes aren't just used by passengers enjoying the views. They're also used by freight trains carrying more than 200 million tons of goods each year. But the slow, outdated railways cause problems for freight trains. So the EU is working on upgrading these crossings. The Trans-European Transport Network. Let's talk about the Trans-European Transport Network, or 10T for short. This big plan isn't just about the Alps. It's about upgrading roads, railways, shipping routes, and waterways all across the European Union. The main goal? To make seamless transport systems across borders without any gaps or bottlenecks. The idea for the 10T started back in the 1990s but it really got going in 2013 when the EU announced nine main routes they wanted to improve. These routes, or corridors, stretch from places like Poland to Italy, Finland to Belgium, and Spain to Hungary. Each corridor has its name, like the Baltic-Adriatic Corridor or the North Sea Baltic Corridor. They connect different countries and help goods and people move more smoothly. Overall, the 10T is going to change how Europeans travel, making it easier for everyone to get around. And when it comes to the Alps, the EU is really making a big change by digging tunnels. The longest tunnels in the world. Let's talk about the longest tunnels in the world. Building a tunnel for trains is a tough job. Here's how it usually goes. First, a team picks where the tunnel will start and end. Then they start digging and drilling from both ends. Slowly, they reinforce the walls as they go. Eventually, the two teams meet in the middle, which is called the breakthrough. After that, they make the tunnel stronger and put down the train tracks. Sometimes things go wrong. When workers built the Lutchberg Tunnel in the Alps in 1908, they accidentally hit a water pocket. It flooded the tunnel and sadly, 25 people died. There's also a risk of the tunnel collapsing because it's like a tube of air with tons of soil and rock pushing down on it. But despite the challenges, the EU has finished digging two huge tunnels already. One of them broke world records for its length, and they're working on a few more that will be even longer. Let's start by looking at the first tunnel they finished. Lutschberg Base Tunnel. Let's talk about the Lutschberg Base Tunnel in Switzerland. It's part of the Rhine Alpine Corridor, which goes from the North Sea to the Mediterranean. About 70 million people live near this corridor, which is around 15% of the EU's population. Thanks to the Lutschberg Base Tunnel, people can now travel through the Alps faster than before. This new tunnel is much longer than the old one, about 35 kilometers long. It's also faster, cutting travel time by up to 50%. This is good news for passengers and freight trains. Plus, using trains instead of cars or planes can help reduce pollution and make roads safer. To build the tunnel, workers used traditional methods like drilling and blasting. But they also used modern tunnel boring machines, TBMs, for about 20% of the tunnel. These machines are like giant mechanical worms that chew through rock. They're faster and more reliable than traditional methods. The EU used to avoid building tunnels as much as possible, preferring winding paths down mountains. But with TBMs, they can now build base tunnels straight through the base of a mountain. This means faster, more direct routes, 
and the Lochberg Base Tunnel is just one example of this. Gothard Base Tunnel In 2016, they finished building the Gothard Base Tunnel. It's a whopping 57 kilometers long, almost twice as long as the Lochberg Base Tunnel. Right now, it's the longest railway tunnel in the world, but that might change soon. Like the Lochberg Tunnel, the Gothard Base Tunnel is part of the Rhine Alpine Corridor, which connects Switzerland and Italy. It's made train trips between the two countries about an hour shorter. And get this, it's the deepest railway tunnel too, with parts of it almost 2.5 kilometers below the surface, deeper than any mines in Europe. Here's something cool. Technically, it's two tunnels side by side, one for trains going north and the other for trains going south. So it's not just 57 kilometers long, it's 57 kilometers twice. Building this tunnel was a huge job. They used four massive tunnel boring machines, which are super precise. Even though they got pretty close to perfectly aligning the two tunnels, there was still a tiny difference. But considering the size of the project, it's not too bad. Sadly, nine workers lost their lives during construction, showing that tunneling is still dangerous work. But despite the challenges, the tunnel was finished at a cost of around $12 billion. It opened to passengers in 2016 and is one of the biggest achievements of the 10T. And guess what? More tunnels are being built under the Alps, some even longer and deeper than the Gothard Base Tunnel. Exciting stuff! Mont Dambin Base Tunnel Let's take a look at the Mont Dambin Base Tunnel, which they're expecting to finish in 2032. This tunnel is part of the Mediterranean Corridor, which goes through the Alps from southern Spain to Hungary. When it's done, it'll be 57.5 kilometers long, a bit longer than the Gothard Base Tunnel. Just like the Gothard Tunnel, this one is also two tunnels side by side, with maintenance shafts connecting them. Workers will need to dig more than 100 kilometers of rock in total. They're planning to use eight tunnel boring machines spaced out along the tunnel. This tunnel will stretch between France and Italy. You'll go in one country and come out in the other. High-speed trains will run through it making trips from Lyon to Turin or Paris to Milan over two hours faster than before. Plus, there will be more space for freight trains, carrying up to 1,500 tons of goods every day. The whole project will cost around $8 billion, with the EU paying for 40% and France and Italy sharing the rest. It's a big part of the 10T plan, making travel easier for everyone but not everyone is happy about it. Some people in France and Italy are worried about the noise and environmental damage from high-speed trains. Despite their concerns, the project is moving forward, but there are protests and legal challenges. This reminds us that not everyone agrees on the need for these expensive tunnels. Together, the Lotsberg, Gothard, and Mont Dambin tunnels will cost well over $20 billion, and there are even more tunnels being planned. Coral and Semmering Base Tunnel, in Austria, there's a big project underway called the Korom Tunnel. It's a 30-kilometer-long tunnel that's more than 1,000 meters underground. But they hit some spots with groundwater, so they're making sure to waterproof the walls properly. They're using an eco-friendly, plastic-free liner along the whole tunnel. It's almost done and should be ready for passenger trains by 2026. There's another tunnel project in Austria too, called the Semmering Base Tunnel. Remember the Semmering Bound we talked about earlier? the oldest mountain railway in Europe. Well, they're giving it an upgrade with a new 27-kilometer tunnel. This tunnel is expected to cut travel time through the Alps by at least 30 minutes. Brenner Base Tunnel Finally, let's talk about the future longest tunnel in the Alps, the Brenner Base Tunnel. This is a huge project that connects Austria and Italy. It's 55 kilometers long, but with a 9-kilometer side tunnel called the Innsbruck Bypass, it adds up to 64 kilometers. Even though it's technically two tunnels side by side, there's also a small third tunnel underneath. What's interesting about this tunnel is that it crosses over itself underground. In Austria, trains run on the right side of the tracks, while in Italy, they run on the left. So deep inside the Brenner Base Tunnel, they'll switch sides. To build this, engineers are using a bunch of tunnel boring machines with names like Serena, Virginia, and Lilia. They're digging through the Alps right now, and the tunnel should be open by 2032. It's going to cost around $11.4 billion, adding up to almost $45 billion for all the Alpine tunnels. There were also smaller tunnels being built, like the Sineri Base Tunnel, which is 15 kilometers long. 
These tunnels are going to change Europe. But are they worth all that money? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks and see you in the next video.